it's great to be able to present today a little bit about what we've been doing at the Bureau of Meteorology. Um, we've really been looking at establishing a, a framework to transform and uplift our data capabilities across um, data management, data governance and uh, data analytics, data sciences, and really looking at ways to, to build that into everything that we're, we're doing and the capability um, to deliver even more value for our customers. Um, most of you would already, I'm sure, know the Bureau of Meteorology and hopefully uh, you're one of our customers uh, in a sense. Uh, we actually provide, um, the, for those of you who don't know too much about us, um, we provide weather, climate, ocean and water um, services across Australia and internationally um, for, for all sectors um, and, and particular industries in, 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 in particular such as aviation industry um, and defence etc. So you know the Bureau has a, a great reach across the country and we also provide um, agricultural services and, and things like that as well. Um, in terms of our um, uplift what we've really been doing is, is the first step was setting a direction so really looking at how we could go about um, providing an enterprise-wide approach to our, our data capability. Obviously, the Bureau has a broad range of data, as I gave an indication of um, when I was first speaking, but you know, we've got really some really large data sets um, in terms of volumes. We have real-time data and we're also processing um, you know, a huge range of um, more information assets, things like um, looking at actual reports and, and some of our summaries that get used um, for, for you know, seasonal outlooks and um, you know, looking at monitoring climate, for example. So uh, you know, there's a broad range of different um, data types at the, in our organisation. And so we wanted to create um, a, a, an approach that really looked at how we could uplift overall and that aligned with our strategic directions. So we've called that Data 2022 and Beyond. Um, and there's a link to the document um, that I've provided um, that's available for everybody in the um, document uh, that accompanies this. I can't remember exactly what it's called, the, the, the shared document that I'm sure Catherine has posted uh, already. Um, and what we're really looking at um, in terms of setting this direction was to provide uh, guidance for decision making and how we were making uh, decisions around our data assets, how we were managing them and, and the IT platforms, the training, the skills development and everything that goes with managing the data. But also looking at where we're actually making investments in our data assets and in our data platforms. Um, we also really wanted to make sure that we were already leveraging a range of different transformation activities happening across the organisation to drive that maturity uplift in the way that we're managing our data. And um, we have in particular, uh, you know, big program of work around our IT data management capability. Uh, we also have um, a range of different programs looking at our observations network, so the way that we collect um, the data and bring it into the organisation. We also have um, some integration platform work in the IT space and we're also looking at our service delivery uplift um, and process management and product management as other capabilities that we're also trying to, to really drive at the moment. So we really wanted to embed data considerations into all those different activities and make sure that that helps to drive our uplift. Um, and one of the most important things that we really found was the importance of having uh, executive endorsement and having the sponsorship and ownership for everything we want to do in, in um, driving that data uplift uh, throughout the organisation and having that coming from um, all levels of the organisation and, and having that support. So to do this, we've identified five transformative themes and you can see them listed there. One of our key ones is engaging with our customers and um, obviously we really want to look at ways to leverage the data assets that we have in our organisation to provide that value to our customers. We also want to enable pe people and culture, which is you know, a main call out, and to optimise our systems and processes and embrace innovation. So in terms of enabling our people and culture, it, we wanted to make it really clear that uh, data management and, and um, the 
the working with data and using data and driving that value really does come through um, our people and the, the talented people that we have at our organisation really do um, add that value to the way that we work with our data and the services we provide. But we also really wanted to drive this cultural aspect um, about setting a culture around data management and the rigour and, um, and passion and enthusiasm that people have for, for really making data as, as a central part of what we do and being a data driven organisation that was a really important call out for our transformation and uplift. So to do this, this piece uh, around data 2022 and beyond, it was really important for us to look at um, sort of three key phases. And the first is really around consolidation. So thinking about um, the already great practice that's happening in, in certain areas of the organisation and some of the, the highlights and wanting to um, draw those out and share those with others. So, you know, utilising things like communities of practice, um, setting up things such as um, exchanges between different teams and looking at the ways that we could really drive um, that sharing across the organisation of, of best practice. We also wanted to look at uplift, so where we identified really great examples of good practice to think about how we could roll those out and make them common to really lift the base level of our um, maturity to, to the next level and take that um, overall step in uplift. Um, but we also recognise that there's a, a few gaps and things that we might want to um, really help uh, transform and, and take a step change um, in, in our maturity in those spaces and, and some of the areas um, are really helping to, to make us able to do that, such as the um, IT management platforms that I talked about um, at the start, you know, some of those capabilities coming on board will really enable us to um, transform the way we work and some of the processes are associated with that. So to do um, and achieve against these five uh, key tr transformative themes that I just spoke to, we've identified um, 10 key priorities to 2022. Um, and the first one that I, I won't call them all out because you, you can see them there on the slide and they're in the document. But the first one is, that I wanted to speak to was really about implementing enterprise data governance and lifecycle planning. So we see that as a foundational piece um, to really helping to drive the uplift. And we've established a data governance office um, that's been in place in the Bureau for uh, the last couple of years. And that's really helping to, to develop a whole range of different um, you know, materials and tools and, and, and I'll talk through some of those in a moment, but setting up that capability. Um, we also recognise that uh, essential to the data uplift is really about creating a stu data stewardship model and rolling that out across the organisation uh, to have those key roles called out and, and a way of working with data. We also want to identify and grow the future data skills and capability and have some clear resource planning around um, where, where the skills are, what are the skills gaps, where do we want to take it, how are we going to train people, um, what are the pathways and the, um, and the future data skills and, and this, you know, attending this uh, session today has been a great insight into some of the things that are happening across the Australian community and um, opportunities to partner and leverage um, what's already happening. Um, and, and, you know, working with others to share what we're doing as well. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can do in that space and we wanted to call out that as a really fundamental piece of achieving the uplift. Um, the, the other thing that relates to the skills is really around, um, you know, new analytics, business intelligence and machine learning capabilities. And um, as was mentioned in other presentations this week, uh, there's been a real change uh, in the, the technology that people are using and the way that people are using um, some of the tools and, and being able to position um, our organisation to be able to utilise those um, and further enhance our already established capabilities as well is really important. So we've We've got, um, you know, plans in, in each of these places, but I wanted to just speak a little bit about um, our data governance approach at the Bureau. And this is the framework that we've set out for the organisation. And I'll just take a moment to, to talk through um, the, 
this slide a little bit. Um, so we've really, in setting this out, we've identified a, a bit of a scope statement. So, you know, the, the Bureau, we wanted to everybody recognise that we're really managing critical national assets and um, that we need the rigour around that to, to do it effectively. Um, the importance of data governance is that it improves data management and enhances data value. And um, we've also indicated that at the Bureau, and I, I said at the start, that we're really looking at our frameworks for driving data and information management. Um, so we're looking at information assets as well. So it's a really broad scope, which has its complexities because obviously the Bureau has, um, you know, very complex data um, and, you know, lots of grid and spatial data, point observations, very technical and, and environmentally based data. But then we also have, um, you know, social media and website analytics and a whole range of other sorts of information and all the reports. So it's really important um, to recognise that there are differences in how you manage those, but also try to drive that commonality. And that's the approach that we've taken in our organisation. We've also um, got uh, you know, some key messages called out um, here. And then we've structured it around um, three key pillars. So the first is around um, making sure that everybody knows how to work with data and setting out the rules associated with that. And you can see that we've really tailored it around um, the, the Bureau's language around our data um, use and what's important there. We also set out um, a, a section there on, on roles and really calling out that as one of our key pillars has, has been really important for helping to establish some of the um, the focus that we wanted to have on, on the people side. And we also um, have called out um, the tools. And so looking at the, you know, recognising the fact that we need to provide the tools to help people work with data. And that includes things like training, um, as well as, you know, template, templates and checklists for self-guided learning and, and use of, of these artefacts. Um, and we also wanted to, um, take a slightly more people-centred focus on the um, data life cycle. Um, so instead of a, a life cycle of the data, we're focused on the data management stages, which is really about how people interact with um, the data and the management of the data. So um, at the Bureau, again, using um, probably more Bureau language um, that resonates with our staff. So, um, you know, we've really tailored the this data governance approach to um, calling out some of the key aspects are around um, the people side and, and the roles uh, is one of the key pillars and that's been really important to helping us deliver. Um, but we've also, you know, got a, a focused procedure, um, which is a high level document that sets out exactly how we want to develop our skills and how we want to manage our data in the organisation. So that's, uh, that's what we've been doing lately at the Bureau and thanks all for your time and I'll happily take some questions if there are some.